Welcome back to Roomcast, everybody. Um, today, we will be talking about, perhaps some say the granddaddy of all rune books. We'll be talking about Futhark by Idrid Thorson. And I've just got some new sage, so I'm gonna replenish my sage for my runic apothecary. If you've been watching these videos for a while, maybe you're new to it, you can go back into the previous history of videos and see um, how to start building your own runic apothecary. Every herb has its corresponding, every root has its own corresponding herb. And uh, I've been encouraging all you roomsters to start your own little apothecary. It just adds so much to uh, your rune work. And not a lot of people do it, so uh, I encourage you all to start doing it. I just replenished my supply of this white sage, which is really, really good. Of course, its corresponding herb is algae. Algae is uh, the root of awareness and protection, and uh, sage definitely does that. It has its cleansing oop, properties. Steady the camera. Its cleansing properties um, and is been a staple in my rune and magic work for many, many, many years. So, it smells good. There's my sage, it's all ready to go. Okay, today what I wanna talk about is Futhark. And if you're a fan of this channel, um, which, you know, many of you are new to this channel, but anyway, if you have, you can go back into the other videos and see some of the other books that I've reviewed. This is a nice shiny new copy, relatively new, of Futhark. Um, Futhark, my original copy wore out, much like this one here, Rune Magic by Nigel Pennick, is almost worn out. Um, eventually I'll have to replace this one, but if you take a look at these three books together, and I'm, I've reviewed this one, and I've reviewed this one, so you can go back in the history and see my reviews of these. This is the holy trinity of rune books in my, in, in you know, in my experience. Uh, these books uh, came out in the 80s and 90s and guided me all throughout my runic journey. They were the ones that I went to again and again. This is my second copy of Leaves of Yggdrasil by Freya Oswin, so... Uh, and this is my second copy of Futhark. Like I said, the other ones looked more like this one when I finally replaced them with all my notes and taped on covers and bindings uh, and I held them together for as long as I did. But if you only had three rune books, uh, these would probably be the three that you would want. Um, and Futhark is definitely one of them. The granddaddy, I call it, of all books. Early on in my runic uh, studies, uh, I had just the one book, the Ralph Blum book, which came out in 1982. And the runes really spoke to me, and I worked with that book and that book alone for uh, quite a while. Then I came across uh, somebody who introduced me to Casting Tines and, um, and suggested this book to me. Uh, I went to my local magic shop and ordered it and waited, and when it came in, here it was, Futhark, A Handbook of Rune Magic, Idrid Thorson. This book blew my mind. Uh, I was starving for it because um, before, you know, with just the Ralph Blum book, and maybe I had one other, but maybe not. It could have been that Ralph Blum was the only other book I had. This book delved into everything in a much, much deeper level. So um, it also taught me the traditional uh, linear uh, order of the alphabet, which I did not know. If you only read the Ralph Blum book, uh, he had his runes in a different order. Um, so uh, he has uh, Odin's poem here. I know uh, that I hung on that windy tree night um, all of the knights nine wounded by spear and given to Odin, myself to myself. 
On that tree which no man knows from which roots it rises, they dealt to me no bread, no drinking horn. I looked down. I took up the runes. I took them screaming. I fell back there. Um, this is the uh, shaman uh, poem, the shamanistic type in which, you know, the shaman or Vicky sacrifices himself to get the knowledge uh, of the runes. So uh, very deep, very, very cool. And then he goes into the history of the runes, um, great examples of runic patterns found in uh, German buildings, um, bind runes are gone into. He goes into the uh, three main orders of the Futhark, um, the Elder, the Younger, and the Anglo-Saxon, which have those additional runes, which are really cool. Um, but this book just kind of, uh, I guess, exploded onto the scene. Um, and of course, I came to it six years after it was published, probably about 1990 and um, is when I first got this book. So uh, copyright 1984. So let's talk a little bit about the 1980s. Ralph Blum's book came out in 82 and Idred and some of the other people like Freya were discovering the runes in the 80s and discovering that they were the, going to be the tool of choice for them. Something happened. Uh, both Freya and Idrid were both in other um, magic covens or orders and were interested in, um, in this kind of thing, in what would be known as neo-paganism or ancient paganism. Uh, but then they discovered the runes and both of them branched out around the same time. Of course, Freya's book didn't come out till 1990 or 89. Edred's came out before. Let's see if I can find out when Freya was. 1990 is the first date for this one. So there was something happening in the 1980s. The runes were calling out for those that would take them up. And those that heeded the call were rewarded with, you know, a wealth of knowledge and have uh, guided me ever since with these books. Uh, Thorson's book, you know, goes into a little bit of the lore. It goes into uh, the history um, and the tradition. And uh, actually, Edward started the Rune Guild around about that time, maybe 1986, 1989. Um, or joined or started and or there's a little bit of uh, uh, discrepancy I think in that regard but nonetheless he became room master extraordinaire in the United States and uh, you know his book is just groundbreaking uh, for what it was <clears throat> it gave us a whole different depth into room study and for me it was I loved it I uh, and I, I love it to this day. I go back to it time and again for all the basics that you would want. He goes into the Galder, how to speak the runes and how to initiate that vibration and that magic, how to, how to do the stata, how to stand, kind of like runic yoga, if you will, to invoke more of the power of each rune. Um, he shows you alternate forms here. Just This is something so important to me because I, I cast time, so I want to see these alternate forms, you know. Um, so uh, he just goes through everything. Each rune is broken down depth uh, in depth. Um, it, get, it gave me my first handle on the actual magical implications, not just the divination and or uh, the healing and strength that I was drawing from the runes, but how to really work my will with the runes and have a deeper understanding of each rune and how to use it in my magic work. Um, Many, many times I would go back uh, to this book again and again um, and just soak it in, you know, each rune. And the thing is, is that, you know, this is written all these years ago. It's still foundational. It's still a wealth of knowledge. Um, it's just everything you would want in a basic rune book. After he goes through all 24... 
after he goes through all 24, this is where things really took off for me. The theory of rune magic, the rune world, how to understand uh, the Edas, manifestation of the rune uh, world, uh, the pattern of manifestation, how one rune le um, relates to the other in the order, um, the Eightfold Division, which is really awesome, the streams of energy uh, that they uh, produce and how you can attune yourself with them, uh, the soul and personal power concepts, just some really cool stuff here, basic theories of rune magic, any aspiring runester uh, needs this book, just like you need a copy of this one. And if you don't have a copy of this one, you absolutely also need a copy of this one. With these three books, you will have a firm foundation of rune magic history. The tools, the tools was very inspirational to me. The attire, preliminary exercises, how to uh, uh, make a gandar and magically inscribe this formula into it to initiate it. The rune knife, the sax type. This is the knife that I could not find and how I was inspired to create my own knife because I couldn't find a knife like this one. Um, everything in here, the restar and the inscriptions, how to do your magical space the hammer right is coming up here. The hammer right, which, uh, yes, here's the hammer right, see? Um, how to bless and protect a magical enclosure in order for you to work your will. The hammer right, excellent ritual, ritual magic. Meditation, runic meditation, so important to your rune work. Meditating on these runes is really going to help charge the energy, bring it to you, help you learn and understand it, um, and help you work with it. Talismanic magic, how to create talismans, bind runes. I mean, all the foundations are here, and then the numerical system, which was groundbreaking for me. Numerical formulas that are written in runes, but also have numerical meaning. Symbolism, pictographic sim symbols, um, all these ancient symbols and everything in here. It's just a wealth of knowledge for any runester to have. Um, you really can't, uh, you can't really do without cutting runes for, or cutting wood for rune tines. Look, all the stuff. You know, it all comes back to things that I've learned in these three books. Um, my foundation is in these three books, and it would not be the same without Futhark um, and Idrid Thorson. So, uh, here again, great tables of correspondences, appendices, um, just... Uh, you know, when it comes to stuff like this, you're like, what would I have done without it? We were flying blind. We were really flying blind before these amazing authors wrote these books. Um, there's a bibliography. Um, and in here is where I started building my library. Liam Hollander. You got to get that book. There's Guido von List. Tacitus. These are all volumes that are in my library today. Hilda, um, Hilda Ellis. Um, uh, but anyway, there's uh, Ralph Elliott. Um, this is how I started building my library. Once I got a rune book, I'd look at the bibliography, what were their references, and I would get those books and build on that knowledge. Um, anyway, yes, foundational, must have for any runester. Uh, this book still blows me away today. Um, it's a great reference. And now that we've completed the three main books, and I've done a couple others, Donald Tyson, I will expand my book reviews, um, you know, further in future videos. But yes, this completes the trilogy of what I believe are the three most foundational books uh, for Roonsters that are 
a must have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe. Tell me about your favorite rune books. I'd love to talk about rune books. Um, and I will see you on the next video.